this. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full detail. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Right now, let's talk about a spring tonic for that car of yours. Heavy-duty RPM motor oil, the oil that we said would double engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Heavy-duty RPM was developed through a series of grueling laboratory and road tests, which even utilized atomic energy. Now, here's added evidence of heavy-duty RPM superiority. A cab company, operating in the tough grind all cabs go through, found heavy-duty RPM actually reduced engine wear 71%, more than doubling engine life. So why take chances with your car when you can get the protection of heavy-duty RPM motor oil at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. The Greystone Ghost, another adventure of George Valentine. Who, who's that? What is it? I'll be right... Oh, no. No, Garrett, it isn't you out there. It can't be. You're dead. I must be dreaming, Garrett. I must be. I'll open the window. Where... Where are you, Garrett? You were there just a moment ago. But you weren't there, were you? You're dead, aren't you, Garrett? You couldn't. You just couldn't come George, this is the strangest letter I've ever read. Oh, sure, we get some strange ones. What's it say? Dear Mr. Valentine, will you please be my guest at Greystone for a few days? I'm prepared to pay whatever you ask for your services. Your work will be to rid me of a ghost that I'm sure isn't a ghost at all. Huh? When you arrive, please call f- from the telephone at the gatekeeper's lodge as you won't be able to get across the moat until I lower the drawbridge. Signed, Amanda Gray. Hey, how about that? Down comes the drawbridge. It excites the imagination. Personally, I think our plan's a little bit nutty. Oh, Brooks, you have no imagination. The bridge over the moat is down. We enter the palace. <laughs> it certainly looks like one. Mr. Valentine? Uh-uh. Yes, Mrs. Gray. Coming right in. George. Yeah, Brooks. Suppose she pulls the bridge back up. How do we get out of here? We'll face that problem when we come to it. Oh, Mrs. Gray, this is Miss Brooks, my assistant. Oh, how, how do you do? do? My dear, I'm happy to have you both Amanda. here. Uh, yes, Dwight? Oh, Amanda, I think we've finished all of our business for today, so... Oh... You have guests. Uh, yes, of course, Dwight. I want you to meet Mr. Valentine and Miss Brooks. Mr. Dwight Owen, my attorney. How do you do? How do you Hello. do? Hello. He's come out to help me, Dwight. He's going to help find out about these things. Oh, yes. Well, I certainly hope you can, Valentine. Amanda is uh, pretty upset about the whole thing. I hope I can, too, Mr. Owen. I, uh, I just don't happen to know what my job is yet. Oh, well, of course you don't. If you'll excuse me. Goodbye, Amanda. I'll see you in a few minutes. Yes, Dwight. Now, if you two will step in a little farther. That's it. All right. Come in the study, please. We can talk better there. I expect you think I'm completely crazy, don't you? Why, <laughs> no, Mr. I Gray. wouldn't blame you if you did. A woman living in a house with a moat around it in this day and age. Well, there must be a reason for that. Of course there is. Oh, sit down, won't you? Oh, Thank sure, you. thanks. 
My husband was an architect. His name was Garrett Gray. Oh, yes, I've heard of him. He was an authority on old English architecture. He loved it. That's why he built this house. It was a show place. I can see that it was. The bridge over the moat was seldom raised before his death. But since then, things have happened that made it quite necessary. I see. Uh, would you tell us exactly what has happened, Mrs. Gray? Certainly. My husband died a month ago. Just two weeks ago, I was awakened to see his face in my bedroom window. You... you did? Of course I didn't. I told you my husband is dead. I saw him buried. Well, then how do you account for the... Seeing his face? It's quite simple. Some years ago, a sculptor friend of Garrett's did a bust of him. Yes? The next morning, after my apparition, I found the bust on the ground outside my bedroom window. Oh, some practical joker, I suppose. They seldom have any regard for personal feelings. I know, but my practical joker must have had extraordinary powers, Mr. Valentine. The house was completely locked. The bust was in this room. Oh, I see. Well, who lives here besides yourself, Mrs. Gray? Oh, just my niece and nephew, Ronald and Sylvia Gray. They're really my husband's niece and nephew. Of course, they're Stevens. He's the butler. Mrs. Gray, is that when you began raising that bridge over the moat? No. Not until after the second thing happened. What was that? A large portrait of my husband disappeared over the mantel in the living room one night. I searched everywhere for it. Did you tell your niece and nephew about it? Of course, and Stevens, too. They were all as amazed as I. The next day, it was in place again. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Gray, I still With think some... blood stains on it. Oh. And uh, there were no signs that any of your household had been hurt? None at all. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing seems certain, Mrs. Gray. Somebody's trying to get you to move. Oh, George, what was that? I don't know. It sounded like an explosion of some kind. Stay here with Mrs. Gray, Brooksy. I'm going to see what this is all about. Oh. Well, what? Hello. I... Well, who are you and what do you want? I just happen to be a guest of Mrs. Gray. Valentine's the name. I imagine you're Stevens. Why, yes, sir. Well, what happened back there? I was just going to tell Mrs. Gray about it. There was an explosion. In the kitchen. Oh, come on back. We'll have a look. Yes, but I must tell Mrs. Gray. She knows. Come on. Where's the kitchen? Right through this door, sir. Good. Oh, well, yeah. Messed up that corner pretty well, didn't it? Yes, sir. I was in my room, the first one down the hall, and it practically threw me out of my chair. Dynamite, I'd say, with the smell of it. And the burned out fuse. The wire running right out here. Come on, Stevens. Let's follow this wire out the back door and see where it goes. Very well. But I feel very uncomfortable about this whole business, sir. Things have been happening. Well, that's why I'm here. I think there is a ghost around here, Mr. Valentine. I think there's a live ghost around here, Stevens. A pretty clever live ghost, too. Here, take a look at this. What? Why, that is my alarm clock. It disappeared yesterday, very mysteriously. And I... And it's all rigged up to spark that fuse at exactly this hour. The job was a little amateurish, but... It worked, didn't it, Stevens? Yes, sir. It did. But what I want to know is, who could have done it? That's what I want to know, too. So come on, let's find out. You mean you have a way of knowing? I'm not sure. I just don't like all these things happening to my friend, Mrs. Gray. Well, naturally. Neither do I, sir. All right, then do something for me. Uh, what, sir? Get the niece and nephew, Sylvie and Ronald, and come to the den with them as soon as possible. I'd like to have a little conference. <laughs> Aunt Amanda? Uh, yes, Sylvia. Well, Stephen says there's a man here who wants to see us. That's right, my dear. Come in. All three of us, Aunt Amanda? Certainly. Mr. Valentine, this is my niece, Sylvia, my nephew, Ronald. And you've met Stephen. Yes, that's right. How do you How do? How do you do? And Miss Brooks. How do you do? How do you do? We're here as your aunt's guests, but uh, we're also here to help her get rid of a live ghost. Mr. Valentine, I don't like to say this, but isn't it possible that Forgive me, Aunt Amanda. I don't want to That's hurt you. That's all right, but... my dear. You mean that perhaps I've been imagining things. That's possible, isn't it? I feel just as Sylvia does, but... Neither one of you, or Stevens here, saw the face in the window, of course. But you knew about the portrait being missing. I must make a confession about the portrait, Mr. Valentine. Oh? 
After Mrs. Gray told me about it, I made a thorough search of the house. I found it in a storeroom and put it back where it belonged. Oh, uh, with the blood stains on it? I expect I shall lose my position anyway, so I may as well say it. Did you notice the bandage on Mrs. Gray's finger? Well, no, no, I guess I didn't. But we've got another thing to think about. Ronald, Sylvia, didn't you hear the explosion a few minutes ago? Well, I didn't. I was asleep. I heard it, of course. It sounded like a car backfiring to me. Okay, then. I just want to ask you one thing. Don't you all think Mrs. Gray should move out of this house? I do. If she doesn't, something really bad might happen to her. Well, I don't. If somebody is trying to make her move for some reason, you can find out who it is. Can't you, Mr. Valentine? Yes, Sylvia. I think he can. How about you, Stevens? I happen to have one theory, Mr. Valentine. I don't agree with what I'm sure you are thinking, if I may say so. I don't think this is an inside job. Oh, uh, you don't, huh? And for one, I am happy to have you here. I just hope nothing bad happens to you, too. <laughs> Very nicely spoken, Stevens. All right, if you'll show Miss Brooks and me to our rooms, we'll freshen up for dinner. And tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we'll see what happens. Who is it? Who's that? What do you want in my room? I can see you moving. I warn you, I have a gun. Go away or I'll shoot. Leave this room. Don't come any closer, I'll... What was it? What happened? Mr. Valentine is in my room, on the floor. I think I'd kill somebody. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Take that moment, if you will, to think back over the past year. How many times in the last 12 months have you had battery trouble? Did you know that American motorists have to call for emergency service because of battery failures more than 10 million times a year? Yet most of these failures need never happen. Don't wait for trouble to come to you. Have your battery checked. If it's just plain tired out, plan now to get a new Atlas heavy-duty battery. Atlas is the battery that's packed with power to give you good, fast starting and also supply power for your radio, heater, or other accessories. Remember that you, you're probably going to be doing a lot of driving during the warm weather ahead. And that's one good reason for having the secure feeling of a rugged, dependable Atlas battery under the hood. Atlas batteries are backed by a written warranty that's honored by more than 38,000 Atlas dealers from coast to coast, and in Canada, too. So you know that no matter where you drive, your Atlas battery will be well taken care of. And if a replacement should be necessary, any one of those 38,000 dealers is authorized to honor your warranty. Yes, you can help to avoid being among those motorists who will have to call for battery service 10 million times this year. Just drive in soon and ask to see the new Atlas battery. Budget terms are available, and you can also use your Chevron National Credit Card to make your purchase at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're sent for by the widow of a well-known architect to help her dispose of a ghost that isn't a ghost. You can see nothing supernatural in the face at the window, the disappearing portrait, or the crude bomb. Someone is obviously trying to frighten your client out of this strange house that is surrounded by a moat. If your name is George Valentine, you suspect that Amanda Gray has solved the case herself by shooting a nocturnal prowler in her room. And as you hurry with her along the hallway... 
It was a figure, Mr. Valentine, all in white like a ghost. It opened the door and came into my room. I shot, and it fell on the floor. All right, now, we'll find out. George, where are you? Down the hall here, Brooksy. This is your room, isn't it? Yes. All right, now, where's the light switch? It's right here. Good. Now, where did you see this? Oh. But there was someone. I know it. Are you all right, Mrs. Gray? Yes, yes, but... Your ghost left its white sheet all right, Mrs. Gray. But I'm afraid your aim wasn't so good. He or she has climbed out of the shroud and left. But I shot right at it and it fell on the floor. Hey, wait a minute. Let's see your gun. Yes. Yes, it's here on that table. Something sounds pretty phony about this. Yeah. Yeah, here's the answer, all right. You're sure this gun was properly loaded, Mrs. Gray? Oh, yes, the men loaded it for me in the store. Uh-huh. Well, I'm afraid something has happened in the meantime. George, what do you mean? Mrs. Gray didn't kill anybody, Brooksy. She couldn't. Because this gun is loaded with blank cartridges. With blanks? Well, that couldn't be, Mr. Valentine. I saw him put in the real bullet. Oh, I'm sure he did. But someone else decided it would be safer this way. Somebody in this house, George? Well, it's pretty obvious. Anyone coming in from outside would have to swim across the moat. I don't see any signs of water around here. The sheet is perfectly dry. Mrs. Gray. Mrs. Gray, I heard a commotion. Is anything wrong? Well, Stevens, you're quite well dressed for the middle of the night. I came as quickly as I could, and if you're trying to accuse me of I'm something... Mad. Here comes Sylvia, George. Yeah, gathering of the clan. Just one more party to be heard from now. Why? What's the matter? Why are you all here in Aunt Amanda's room? Your aunt just shot a ghost, Sylvia. She what? Yeah. What's that you said, Valentine? You heard me, Ronald. Pretty frightful experience for your aunt. For all of you, in fact. Imagine, a ghost in the house. But, but that's nonsense. There's no such thing. As a real live ghost? I think there is. I wonder if any of you would like to try on this sheet, just for size. Oh, Mr. Valentine, I realize you're trying to help me, but now you're casting suspicions on Sylvia and Ronald and Stevens. They wouldn't do anything like this. No, no, I suppose not. All right, we've had our little excitement for tonight. Suppose you all go back to your rooms, huh? I'd like to ask a few questions of Mrs. Gray. What are you thinking, George? Oh, I was just trying to go along with Stephen's theory for a moment. You know that this isn't an inside job, as he so quaintly puts it. But that isn't possible, is it? Oh, I don't know. Mrs. Gray, your husband left a will, I suppose. Why, of course. Well, then tell me, was there any provision that someone else would get the house if you moved out of it? Oh, no, nothing like that. He left everything to me outright, just with a provision that I take care of his niece and nephew, see that they had a home. Uh-huh. Well, that blasts another theory. My husband left a holographic will, wrote it himself, you know. No one had ever seen it. It was sealed and in the safe at our attorney's. But a holographic will isn't unusual, is it, George? Uh, that part wasn't unusual, no. Just one paragraph in it. I've never found out what it meant. Well, what was it? I said something like, My beloved Amanda, there is more fortune that I leave you. It is in Greystone. And you alone will know the key to finding it. Just remember how well we love Pennsylvania. And remember my work. This treasure is for you and you only. Well, what did it mean? I haven't the least idea. I've never been able to figure it out. May I see the will? Well, certainly, but not tonight. Our attorney, Dwight Owen, you met him this afternoon. He has it. I remember, yes. Well, tell me, how many people know about this? Just the people to whom he left something. Sylvia and Ronald Stevens... His secretary, Mr. Carver, and myself. Dwight had us all together when he read it. The same people keep cropping up, don't they, George? Yeah, with one exception. Uh, what about the secretary, Carver? Where is he now? He's living in town. Works for another architect, I believe. Uh-huh. Got his address? Well, yes, I'll get it for you. Good. And uh, I'd like to see the exact wording of that clause in the will. Do you suppose you could have Mr. Owen bring it out here tomorrow morning? Of course, but I think I've quoted it almost word for word. I'm sure you have. But sometimes just one little word makes a difference. Huh? Very well, I'll call Dwight first thing in the morning. George, where are you, George? Here, Angel, in the study. Oh, George, something else has happened. Yeah, what? Mrs. Gray and I just went in the morning room together. So? And the place is a mess, darling. An old hutch cabinet has just been pried apart. An early American chair. The cushion was ripped to bits. Can it be, Mr. Valentine? I can't understand. Well, I think I can, Mrs. Gray. It's probably our fault. Because we're here, I mean. 
Those early American pieces might be from Pennsylvania, I suppose. I suppose so. Well, at least it's a good try. They might be. Well, what are you talking about, George? Well, just that, that with us in the house to check up on what's going on, somebody's getting frantic to find the answer first. Well, here's the will, Amanda, as you asked. I don't quite understand, though. We've been over it many times. Yes, Dwight, I know. I wanted Mr. Valentine to see it. Oh, that's it. Here you are, Valentine. Okay, thanks. I suppose we could save a little time here. I'm just interested in one clause. Oh, the Pennsylvania thing. That's right. So that's why you got these people out here about it. No, Dwight. Actually, it isn't. Uh, let me show you. Uh, let's see. It's, uh... Ah, here we are. Right here. Oh, yeah, thanks. My beloved Amanda, there is more fortune that I leave you. It is in Greystone, and you alone will know the key to finding it. Just remember how well we love the state of Pennsylvania and what it symbolizes. And remember what I did about it in my work. This treasure is for you and you only. Hmm. Now, Valentine, I must tell you, uh, and I hope you'll forgive me, Amanda, that Garrett Gray was uh, a little eccentric about things. And, uh... Also a pretty good architect. Oh, eh? one of the best. Uh Uh-huh. By the way, Mr. Owen, Hmm? did you know Mr. Gray's secretary, Carver, quite well? Why, yes, he's a nice sort of fellow. Any reason for your asking that? Oh, no, none at all. I'm just interested in everybody Mr. Gray mentioned in his book. Oh, yes, yes, of course I see. Uh, Mrs. Gray. Uh, Yes, Mr. Valentine. I'm going to look up Miss Brooks, and then would you mind lowering the bridge over the moat for us? You're not going to be here for lunch. It's almost ready. No, I'm sorry. I have some business of my own to take care of in town. We'll be back later, though. I see. You'll stay, won't you, Dwight? Oh, certainly, Amanda. I'd love to. I I hope you will come back, Mr. Valentine, in spite of everything that's happened. Mrs. Gray, you don't have to worry about that. And when I get back... We'll have an answer to this thing. George, I'm sure you know what you're doing. I think so, Brooksy. Well, I don't. Well, you see, we're up against a paradox. Nobody inside Greystone seemed to be guilty of those stunts, and nobody from outside could get in. That's a paradox, all right. One, One fact or the other had to be wrong, and I figured it must be the second. You mean that somebody could get in some way? Sure. Then I remembered seeing a pile of planks outside the house on the far side of the moat. The ones you looked at when we came out? Yeah, that's right. That's when I knew I was right. After dark, it wouldn't be hard to throw one of those planks across the moat and get in the house. You'd have a hard time proving that, wouldn't you? I don't think so. One of the planks had quite a lot of dried blood on it. Somebody'd hurt himself on a rough edge. So? So, don't forget, there was also blood on that portrait that disappeared and then showed up again. Oh, yes, that's right. Well, where are we going now? Make a call in town. With just a little more evidence, we can tell Mrs. Gray who's trying to run her out of her house. There doesn't seem to be anyone in the apartment, George. Well, now, that's fine. Much easier to find what I'm looking for. But suppose he comes in and finds us here. He could have us arrested. Gotta take that chance, Angel. We're gonna like this thing. Hey, that one's got it. Go on in, Angel. But stay right there by the door. Call out if anyone comes. Yes, all right, darling. But please be careful. No. Where would anybody be liable to? I'm gonna try this. No soap there. Desk, maybe. Yeah, I thought so. Please hurry, George. I'm frightened. Be right with you, Angel. I struck pay dirt. You found something? Sure. Take a look at this. Those are cartridges. That's right. A box partly full of blanks plus some real shells. Angel, it looks as though we have this deal pretty well pinned down. Well, what's next? After we get out of this place, I mean. A fast telephone call to our client. And then a little later, we'll go back out to Greystone and start some fireworks. All right, Mrs. Gray, you've got everybody in the study there? All except Mr. Carver. I called several numbers after I talked to you on the phone but couldn't find him. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'd like to have had him here. But let's get on with it anyway. Come on in, Brooksy. Yes, I'm coming, George. You really found something, Mr. Valentine. I'm sure of it, Mrs. Gray. 
Well, hello there. Yes, it's about time I should think. Well, I wanted you all here so I could put your minds at rest about these strange happenings out here. You mean you found out... Yes, yes, I believe we have, sir. Well, then what is it? Come on, Valentine, tell us. You sure you want me to, Owen? I don't know what you mean. You see, when we first met yesterday, I, I didn't notice that your left hand is bandaged. The one that you heard on those boards across the moat. You're making an accusation. That's Valentine. right. It would have been the same night the portrait of Mr. Gray reappeared with blood on it. Mr. Valentine, you can't be safe. I'm afraid I am, Mrs. Gray. You see, Owen, I took the liberty of looking around your apartment this afternoon, and I came across these. Oh, you meddling young fool. They're bullets. Bullets that were taken out of your aunt's gun. The rest are blanks, just like the ones that replaced them. Dwight, I can't believe it. You, of all people. I don't know what you can do to him, of course. Get him for prowling, I suppose. Maybe for trying to frighten you to death so he could have time to search the house for more treasure. Possibly we can have him disbarred. At least I'm sure he won't be your attorney any longer. But, George, you still haven't found what's hidden here in the house. Oh, we'll find it now, all right. Mrs. Gray, if you'll call in a couple of stonemasons as soon as possible, I think we can remove this temptation. If you're missing something in driving pleasure, if a sputtering motor has you hugging the side of the road, here's a suggestion. Before you spend any money for engine repairs, try a tank full of Chevron Supreme, the balanced gasoline. Chevron Supreme gives you all eight high-performance qualities. Quick starting, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, vapor lock prevention, anti-knock, full power, economy mileage, and area blending. Get top all-around performances from your car. Drive in and fill her up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. George. Yeah, Angel? Why are you having those men tear down that stone arch over the front door? Yes, Mr. Valentine, I'm willing to do what you say. Well, I finally figured out that clause in your husband's will, Mrs. Gray. Oh? The state of Pennsylvania and his work. Now, how did they fit together? Simple. His work was architecture. Pennsylvania is the keystone state. George, you figured that out. And the keystone is one of the important parts of architecture. There's only one in this house. Why, I should have thought of that. Probably Owen would have liked to also. Oh, there, it looks like they've got into it. It was apparently hollow, all right. Aunt Amanda, Aunt Amanda. Yes, yes, Rumble, what is it? That keystone was hollow, just as Valentine thought it would be. But is there anything? Of course, it's packed with currency, big bills. Come on, come and see. Yes, yes, I'm coming, Rumble. <laughs> well, Angel, I guess we've got rid of Mrs. Gray's ghost for her. Nothing more for him to look for. George, do you know what I'd like? No, what? A house just like this one. Oh? With a moat around it. And you could hide something in the keystone for me. Oh, no, wait a minute, Angel. I'm still alive, you know. Oh? Prove it. Uh, yeah. Come on, Brooksy, let's go eat. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Gene Bates was heard as Amanda, Larry Dobkin as Owen, Harley Bear as Stevens, Jack Lloyd as Ronald, and Gene Tatum as Sylvia. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>